So we've been talking about when fans will feel safe getting back together in concerts with big crowds, but here's another way to think about it. When would you feel safe having some of your favorite artists get back on stage in front of thousands of people? In a minute, I'll tell you about one star from the 60s who says he's not sure that he'll play in public again until there's a coronavirus vaccine. It's Thursday, April 16th. This is The Current's Music News. I'm Jay. And I'm Jade. And I want to know how you've been spending your shelter in place time. Are you knitting? Are you working on your sourdough starter? Are you just staring into the blank void, wondering what happened to your life? All are great options. However, independent musicians, they have been busy making new music, at least according to an article in Rolling Stone. Uh, there are these platforms called TuneCore and SoundDrop, which allow artists to upload their music to streaming services, and those are seeing a big surge. And when you think about it, a lot of shows are canceled, tours are canceled, artists have a lot more time on their hands to be making new music, and also... It's financially responsible because, yes, streaming services don't really pay that much, but a little bit is better than nothing. And with big labels pushing aside all those big name artist releases, pushing those back, it kind of allows this open space for these independent sort of baby bands to rise to the occasion. And listeners are there. If you are one of the listeners, there is a lot of new music for you to enjoy. E even before this crisis hit, there are about 40,000 new tracks debuting on Spotify each day. That is a lot of new music. It's a lot of new music. So earlier this week, we talked about one public health expert who's caused a stir by saying that big shows probably shouldn't happen again until about a year and a half from now. Well, that was just one opinion, but now more and more voices are weighing in, expressing agreement with the general idea that crowds of any size probably aren't going to feel safe again for the rest of 2020. Billboard reports that the mayors of both New York City and Los Angeles are starting to advise residents, set some expectations. They shouldn't expect events involving thousands of people to come together again until probably 2021. Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti says, quote, I think we all have never wanted science to work so quickly, end quote. But he adds, quote, it's difficult for us to imagine getting together in the thousands anytime soon. So I think we should be prepared for that this year. You know, if you think about anyone who has more incentive than music fans try to get back together, sports fans are going nuts. They are climbing the walls with no sports happening right now. And the New York Times reports that pro sports leagues are thinking about some truly wild schemes to get sports back on track. There's even an idea that maybe pro baseball players should all get together in one secluded location so they can play baseball games with fans watching remotely. I'm trying to think what the music equivalent of that would be. Jay, do you think like Justin Vernon would bring like the whole Eau Claire festival lineup together to just like hunker down in Wisconsin and do all those crazy collabs? Yeah, just be safe together shelter in place together, create some of that new music, and we can all just watch. Everybody's always wanted to be sort of that fly on the wall. Give us that experience. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> it's worth remembering that this isn't just about when fans feel safe getting back together. It's also when artists feel safe stepping out in front of those big crowds again. Mickey Dolenz was supposed to go on tour with his Monkees bandmate Mike Nesmith in July, and he now tells Billboard that seems optimistic. He says, quote, I think everybody's waiting for some sort of drug or vaccine. I'll be honest, I don't think I'm going to be too crazy about going out unless something of that nature happens. Well, one artist that is hoping we're all ready to be back on the scene and going and seeing live music sooner rather than later would be Liam Gallagher of Gallagher Brothers fame and Oasis fame. Uh, yes, he's been making new music and he's ready to share it. So he has announced this massive show that's happening October 29th. I happening October 9th. Uh, it's going to be at London's O2 Arena, which is like the biggie arena in London. And this is a free show for workers of Britain's National Health Services. Um, so those tickets 
already spoken for. People snatch them up. Very optimistic. I love to see it. And uh, they've already announced an opener. It's going to be Primal Scream, which sounds like a great show. And these NHS-supported shows are kind of a new trend in the UK right now. Um, Manic Street Preachers already announced a couple of nights of shows that they're going to be doing to help celebrate the National Health Service. Uh, that's going to be in December, two nights. And The Script and Rick Astley have also announced that they're planning free shows for NHS workers. Well, jazz saxophonist Lee Konitz has died of pneumonia resulting from COVID-19 at age 92. Over the course of a seven decade career, Konitz collaborated with the likes of Charles Mingus and Max Roach, but he was best known for recording with Miles Davis. He was in fact the last surviving musician who played in the historic sessions released in 1957 as the Miles Davis album, Birth of the Cool. And that's today's music news. We'll be back with another update, so like and follow to be sure to catch that. And in the meantime, you can listen to The Current on the radio, on your smart speaker, on our app, on our web stream. Click in the comments and let us know what music news stories are meaningful to you right now. And to wrap up today's episode, uh, I just like the idea of going back in time to when David Bowie was not a household name. Uh, when you think of Bowie now, it's like, yes, legend, icon, everyone knows Bowie. We know all of the different versions of Bowie. But back in 1971, there was this British kind of weirdo artist who was trying to make it in the United States as Ziggy Stardust. So there is a new movie called Stardust that's going to be coming out that tracks this uh, adventure in America with David Bowie. Uh, now, Bowie's estate has no part with it. In fact, uh, they're not, the producers aren't even calling this a biopic. But when you think of biopic, is it a movie about somebody's life? Uh, yes, this is a biopic all about David Bowie. And it was supposed to be released at the Tribeca Film Festival, but that is, of course, not happening anymore. So it's being screened to an audience selectively through this private screening portal. Uh, there's no date yet for a wider release, but there is a first clip. Uh, it stars Johnny Flynn, fresh off of his Emma fame as David Bowie, and Mark Marin plays the Mercury Records publicist who's trying to help him out. I think you're gonna be the biggest made out star in America. Seriously, man, this is a great record. It's a great record. It's just no one knows how to sell you in America, right? They just don't care enough, you know? And you do. Hell yeah, I do. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm, I'm a minority of one, but all <laughs> it takes is one believer to change the world, right? And we got two. Two? You believe in yourself, don't you? <laughs> 